what fishy adventures will our prehistoric culinary wonder find today? Sakai Sam. Just kidding, it's not that heavy. This, seafood, this is what we're talking about today. This box arrived at my workplace two days ago. Now the story behind this is that my cousin Liz, who is a foodie, what is a foodie? A foodie is someone who has an extended knowledge of cooking and a skill in cooking, but doesn't do it professionally. So thank you, cousin Liz, for sending me to the Virgin Bay Seafood Company website. Um, so, Opening the box, this is what I focused on, is the sockeye salmon. Now, sockeye salmon, if you've never used it or consumed it, it's considered to be some of the best Alaskan salmon. Again, did I tell you this is from Alaska? Yeah, two days later, it's in my kitchen. The Virgin Bay Seafood Company, I did a little bit more research. They are, everything is 100% wild caught, 100% sustainability. That is a lot harder to say than you think it is. 100% sustainability harvesting. In the box, there's some uh, recipe cards and there's some more information about the company, Virgin Bay Seafood. Um, we're gonna leave a link below, but let's get started. So right now I have my pan on for my risotto and I have my stock going low because when you make risotto, you add the stock hot. Now, I wish I could say I'm amazing at making risotto. I'm okay, but I got a lot of improvement to do. But anyway, we're gonna we're gonna move forward and we'll go ahead with that. So today, sockeye salmon. It's gonna be over a champagne mushroom risotto with some green peas. We're gonna put some green beans in there with some chili flakes. And we're gonna have a lot of fun because we're gonna go to Funky Town. I have no idea what I'm saying right now. So let's get started. I'm gonna get my onion chopped up, get a nice blade here. Um, we're gonna dice it up for the risotto. Cremini mushrooms. It's a small portobello. It really is, look it up. Make sure you have all your dishes like that. Cut. Cut. A little oil in the pan. Mushrooms going in. Onion going in. Now I'm sauteing these over a relatively high heat because I want a little bit of caramelization on them because caramelization is flavor. Okay? So we're gonna let this cook down, and it's gonna be about three minutes, three to five. So we'll see you in three to five. <laughs> that was a little time. All right, time warp music there. Here we go, a little time warping. So we've got our mushrooms and our onions cooked down. We're gonna add uh, the risotto. Part of the risotto process is cooking the risotto in the pan without the liquid. So you gotta don't, don't go anywhere, okay? You cannot leave, no, don't, don't, yeah, exactly, stay right there. You have to watch your risotto. You have to dedicate time to be there for your risotto. risotto. Be there for the risotto. Very needy. It is. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to saute this for about three to five minutes, getting just a little bit of color on it. You're opening up the risotto itself to absorb all the liquids. I don't know the exact uh, geology that goes into it. But but there is a science to it. I'm not completely aware of what's going on with it, but I know that this is a very, very important step in cooking your risotto. So we're going to let this cook for a little bit, and we're going to be right back. All right, so now that we've got some color on here, we're going to start 
going between the champagne and the chicken stock. Now you want the chicken stock almost at a boiling point. It's gonna bubble real hard right now. I know you said don't make it boil hard. Now I'm putting on my pan low. This is cooking a lot longer than the salmon is going to cook. So this is why you're starting this first and not your salmon first. So it's always good to know what is your longest item cooking. You're gonna start that first. Then you go in order of the cook time to the end product. Makes sense. So when this liquid goes down, we're gonna add the champagne and we're gonna alternate between the champagne and the chicken stock. I'm putting about four to one ratio here. There's about four times as many, four, three to four times as many, as much chicken stock as there is champagne. I don't want it to taste like champagne, but I want the essence of the champagne to be there. Now, we're gonna add a Prosecco. Use whatever champagne you like, okay? Now, if you'll pan over here, Mr. Burr, I'm gonna be cooking my beans in a saute pan. Yes, I'm cooking in a saute pan. Why? Because I run out of other pans to cook in. So, here's a little, little tip that I learned from a friend of mine, chef, mentor, friend, Mr. Andrew Culver. Um, any greens you're cooking, broccoli, beans, um, when you're blanching them, what you're gonna do is add some salt to the water, obviously, but you can add a little sugar as well. Not too much, not overkill on it. And I'm gonna grab my sugar. Okay. And add a little bit of sugar to it too. Beads. All right, let's get the salmon ready. Okay. Yay! All right, um, anytime I'm cooking any protein, I leave it out about almost an hour before I wanna cook it. That way it's not cold in the center, it's closer to room temperature. So we're gonna open this up right here. Where's my trash? Where'd you put my trash, man? Okay, now there are some bones in here. So, I'm trying to find something that I can take these bones out with. I didn't anticipate that. So you gotta be careful, okay? I didn't realize I'd have to do this. You want this out? Because you always gotta be careful with. All right, very important. Any fish, make sure that they're, that you know if there's bones in there. And if there are, take some needle nose pliers and uh, get those little suckers out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna score the skin back here. I'm gonna leave the skin on, then I'm gonna put some cut marks in it, kinda do like a, a pine cone effect to it. Like this, one up here. All right, now let's get some seasoning on this. Just gonna do a little bit of salt and pepper on it flip this over and I'm gonna season the other side because we're gonna eat the skin. It's okay to eat the skin of salmon. Okay. A little bit of seasoning on that. We're gonna do skin down and we're gonna cook it probably 85 to 90% of the way on one side. Then we're gonna flip it and then get it to the plate. So let's go to the skillet that's nice and hot. All right, look how much this has increased in volume. Um, this is one cup. So you can, you really can serve four people with that. Maybe two if I'm eating. Um, got a healthy appetite. Pan's nice and hot, okay? Don't use a heavy oil. I mean, you, you can use an extra virgin olive oil if you want. I like to keep it um, a little bit light when I'm sauteing things. I don't want too much of the flavor of the oil going into anything I'm cooking. So I'm just gonna use a little bit here. Um, the pan's temperature is going to drop a little bit when you add your protein in there so it's important to make sure it's hot enough to sustain it a little bit so it doesn't drop because what ha ends up happening is when it sticks when something sticks is the temperature dropped a little bit or you didn't have enough um, oil in the pan so these are all things that factor in so keep those in mind while you're doing this all right, I think put this down and away away from you does that sound very there's that beautiful sound like, uh, of things happening. So a risotto is probably 
five to seven minutes out, and that's going to be the amount of time that it's going to take for the salmon to cook. The pan's on high. It's, it's cranked. We're going to really crush it with the heat and cook it fast. If you want your salmon medium rare, have at it. I, I'm i more along the medium well type of person with any protein that I'm eating. Um, but again, do what you want with this. I see that my beans are just about done. That's a nice bean. One, oh, that's perfect. So we're gonna we're gonna drain these. Get a little steam bath. I'm gonna turn that down to low and let that uh, stay warm. All right, we're gonna add. Hey, you know what, Barry? The handle of that is still really, really hot. And a minute ago, it was hot, and I still haven't learned. But don't mind me, folks. I'm just a dumb animal. All right, and you can smell the champagne in there. You can smell the mushrooms. You can smell the onions. The salmon is smelling absolutely amazing right now. And I'm letting that crust get crusty and nice. So we're going to take a minute. Now, the, the beans, I'm going to finish with... Uh, some butter, some parsley, and some chili flakes. So we're gonna add a little bit of heat to this dish. Okay. Okay. Start on the peas. Zoto's done. Peas. Oh, 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 I'm oh, sorry. Oh, oh. <sighs> Why are we okay. stopping? Barry's on fire. No, he's on a roll. No, he's on fire. <laughs> he's literally on fire. fire this Barry's on fire. fire. Peas. Going in to, and now if they're frozen, it really takes two to three minutes to get this done, okay? I'm gonna add a little bit of uh, fresh parsley there, a little knob of butter there, some chili flake, a little, knob will do you. A little parsley. We're gonna add a little bit of Parmigiano Reggiano oh. oh. there because why wouldn't we? And now we're gonna flip our salmon. Flip our salmon. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. A little too far. That went a little too far. Not gonna lie. Um, I'm sorry. I'm gonna apologize. Yeah, I got. I gotta apologize. That, that went a little bit too far. Okay, but it's still gonna be okay because if we need to take the, the skin off, we can take the skin off. But I think it's gonna be okay. We trust you, Andy. Thank you. We got our risotto finishing. Our salmon finishing. Our beans are finishing. We're gonna add a little seasoning to our beans. Look at this risotto. Do, 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 do. A little bit of seasoning here. There we go. All right, so now we're gonna bring everything to the plate. We have our champagne mushroom risotto with some Parmesan cheese added and some frozen peas at the last minute. Really, you can really put the frozen peas in there two minutes before you're gonna serve it. Something nice and high. I, I'm not afraid to admit it. I did cook it a little too much. We're gonna put our uh, our little chili butter beans here. It's buttered, buttered beans. Now we're gonna bring our salmon over top of it, like so. Gonna get this out of the way. This out of the way. This out of the way. And paper towels underneath there. Classy, huh? Classy. So we're gonna get a chive oil. What's a chive oil? This is a chive oil. So we're gonna add our chive oil. Round, make it look pretty. It's a chive, basil, and parsley oil. Uh, parsley's there for kind of a filler and some color and the chive and the basil are there for the real flavor. And this is a Demi, I've used this before. Um, yeah, I'm using a veal Demi glaze with salmon. Um, it adds a little bit of saltiness and it's gonna go with the herb uh, scent and flavor from the oil. Just gonna, just gonna add a little bit there just so we kind of get the flavor. And at the very end, we're gonna be adding a compound butter to the top of it. So that the heat from the salmon's gonna melt that down a little bit. So there you have it. Sockeye salmon over champagne mushroom risotto with Parmesan cheese and green peas. We have our buttered chili beans and we have our sockeye salmon from the Virgin 
Bay Seafood Company. Uh, thank you again to my cousin Liz. We're going up in the north part of western New York to 12 Gates Brewery. My friend Sean Barmore. Uh, and we're going to be pairing that with it. It's an IPA. It's a west coast IPA, which means it's three hours behind us. Get a nice little pour there. One for me and one for the man who does all the hard work for Mr. Barry. Get down there. Okay, so I'm upset with the color of the salmon, but it really wasn't too bad um, as far as taste goes. It's a little crispy, but stuff happens. So mind your P's and Q's while you're cooking. Um, that champagne mushroom risotto really adds to the, the salmon. The salmon's kind of fatty, um, so they all really work well together. That veal demi-glaze is kind of like the final little hint before you hit the citrus butter that's melting right over top. Look at that. Now we have some uh, some of the beer. Cheers, my friend. Oh, yeah. That's good. So there you have it, folks. My name is Andy. I'm the T-Rex Chef. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Uh, please like the page. If you like the episode, please subscribe so you can get uh, notifications. Come and join us again. I'm Andy, the T-Rex Chef. And this is... nothing to surpass the yearly salmon run. In keeping with nature's plan for continuing the life cycle, these brave fish wage their dauntless struggle to reach their spawning ground.